Let's warm up with some math. All right, first thing we're gonna do is plot the points and see if we can discover what the equation would be for those points. So plotting one, two, three, six, four, eight, five, ten. Gee, that seems to make a line. Hmm, well, if I have a line, I'm pretty good at lines. I think I can figure out that equation. What's the slope? Let's see, from one, two to three, six. I go up four over two. Well, then that's two, a slope of two. And then from three, six to four, eight, well, I'd go up two over one. Okay, so my slope is two. The other thing I noticed is that it looks like it goes through the origin. Yep. It does. So y equals 2x. And what would my x-intercept be? The origin, 0, 0. What would the y-intercept be? The exact same thing, 0, 0. Try the next two and see if you can figure out the equations. All right, how did you do? Something else we want to focus on is we had the points graphed, so we're pretty good at figuring it out from there, but let's notice something about the points. If I go to my third graph and I take the y and divide by x, 1 divided by negative 3, well, that's negative 1 third. Let's do the next point, negative 1 divided by 3, negative 1 third. And then negative 2 divided by 6, sure enough, negative 1 third. So when I divide the two points, I seem to get that slope. Hmm. Time to look at the next group. Well, let's start this next section the same way. Plot these points. Ooh, these do not look linear. Mm -mm. Let's see if we can come up with an equation. So up above, we divided. Y divided by X. So 8 divided by 1, I'd get 8. 4 divided by 2, oh, I get 2. So I'm not getting that constant. Okay, let's not do that then. Let's try to multiply them maybe. 1 times 8 is 8. 2 times 4 is 8. Hey! Four times two, eight. Eight times one, eight. This is exciting, it's working. So could I do y equals eight times x? Well, let's see. If I plug in one, I'd have eight times one, that's eight, that's true. Okay, if I plug in two, I'd get two times eight, that's, oh, that's 16, not four. So that doesn't work. How could I get, when I plug in two, I wanna get a four back? Maybe division? like y equals eight divided by x. Then when I plug in two, eight divided by two is four. So that totally works. Let's test one more. Eight divided by four, oh, that's two. Eight divided by eight is one. I got too excited, I had to test that last one. So it, this is our equation. Y equals eight divided by x. Interesting. Looks like we have some asymptotes. Yeah, this graph definitely doesn't cross the x-axis and definitely doesn't cross the y-axis. So that means I have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, which is the y-axis. And I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. That's the x-axis. Go we'll graph the other two. Let's check your thinking on those last two. I got y equals negative 30 divided by x. Where did I get that negative 30? Well, two times negative 15 is negative 30. Three times negative 10, negative 30. Now, if it just works on the first two, that's great, but it's gotta work on all of them to be true. So five times negative six, that's negative 30. And then 10 times negative three again, that's negative 30. Mm -hmm. That last one, I have y equals negative three divided by x. Now this one looked really weird when I went to graph it because I had points on the left and the right side of my y axis. Hmm, well, I know for sure I can't plug in zero because then I'd be dividing by zero and we're not allowed to do that. So I have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So looking at the other two graphs, I'm gonna assume that this graph's gonna look something like those. There's just gonna be part of the graph in the second, second quadrant, quadrant and the other part in the fourth quadrant. Now take a look at the first three graphs, group A, and the second three, group B. We just discovered two different types of variation. One is inverse variation, the other is direct. Which one do you think is which? Group A is direct or inverse? Group B is direct or inverse? And then we have two equation types. So group A is direct variation, y equals kx, and group B is inverse variation, y equals k divided by x. And let's take a little closer look about how we can determine whether something is direct or inverse. In the top group, how did I get that constant, the k? Well, I divided y by x, y divided by x, y divided by x, and I checked all of them to make sure. In the second group, what did I do? Well, that time I multiplied x times y and it gave me a constant variation. 
Of course, this can sometimes get confusing. Let's remember where it comes from. Why is direct variation y divided by x? Well, keep in mind the equation was y equals kx, so what happens if I want to solve for k? Well, I would divide out the x. So please don't be trying to memorize two separate pieces of information. Just remember, direct is y equals kx, plug in the xy values, find your k. Same idea with inverse, take that inverse equation, y equals k divided by x, multiply by x on both sides, and k equals xy. So let's check on what we've learned so far. We have three tables here. Let's determine if they're direct, inverse, or neither, and write an equation. This first table, so I'm gonna see if it's direct. Well, direct variation follows the equation y equals k times x. So if I want to find k, I would divide the x off. So k is y divided by x. So let's see if this works. 8 divided by 0 0.2, I'm going to get 40. 20 divided by 0 0.5, oh, that's 40. 40 divided by 1, that's 40. And then 60 divided by 1.5, we get 40. Great, we have that constant of variation, so we know this is direct variation, and our equation is y equals 40 times x. Let's check this on the second one. If I think it's direct variation, I would do 40 divided by 0 0.2. Well, that's 200, okay. 16 divided by 0.5, oh, that's 32. So this definitely isn't direct variation, so let's try inverse. So inverse follows the equation y equals k divided by x. So if I want to find k, I'm going to multiply the x out. So k equals y times x. So 40 times 0.2, well that's 8. 16 times 0.5, hey that's 8. Okay, I'm feeling good about this. 8 times 1, oh 8, and 4 times 2, 8, yes. So this is inverse variation y equals 8 divided by x. Why don't you try that last one? Looks like that last one doesn't follow a direct variation or an inverse variation, so it's okay to say neither. Let's write a model from words. So this first one I'm told, suppose x and y vary inversely. Well, one of the things I do to remember inverse variation is think under, inverse under. y equals k divided by x, the x goes under. We also have to remember that anytime we have an inverse variation or direct variation, we have a constant of proportionality, so I need a k. It won't tell us to put the k in there. So take a look at our inverse variation equation, y equals k divided by x. To solve for k, what do I do? Multiply by x on both sides, so k equals x times y. When they tell me x is 12 and y is 4, all I have to do is multiply. k is going to equal 12 times 4, or 48. Now remember, varies inversely, so the equation is y equals k divided by x, x goes under, so 48 divided by x. Next, we're asked to follow up questions. So based on our model, if we're told that x is 18, then what's y going to be? Well, let's just plug it in, plug it in. All right, 48 eighteenths. Well, let's reduce that. Divide by six, divide by six, and I get eight thirds. So if x is 18, y is eight thirds. Try the next example, see how you do. Okay. So we multiplied our x and y together to get negative 56, and then y equals negative 56 divided by x, inverse under. Next, we're told that y equals 4, what's x? So I have to plug in 4 for y, so 4 equals negative 56 divided by x. Ooh, I'm solving for x. Well, that means let's get it out from the denominator. We never solve for 1 over x, so multiply by x on both sides. 4x equals negative 56, divide out the 4, x is negative 14. The last example here, suppose x and y vary directly. Do you remember direct? Direct was y equals k times x, not under, right? So y equals k times x. In that case, if I want to find that constant proportionality, the k, what do I do with x and y? Hmm, well to solve for k, I'd have to divide out the x. So k is y divided by x when I'm doing direct variation. So y divided by x, 2 divided by 3. Our equation for this one is y equals 2 thirds x. Once again, a follow-up problem. Go ahead and solve. 
So we plug in eight for y, eight equals two thirds x, multiply by the reciprocal, and x equals 12. Let's talk about combined variation and joint variation. Combined variation is when one quantity varies with respect to two or more quantities. And joint variation is when one quantity varies directly with two or more quantities. Let's try a few examples. We have z varies jointly with x and y. Okay, the second I see varies, I'm thinking equals k. When I'm setting up that model, I need that k. Then it says varies jointly. Jointly is just a fancy word for directly. So we know that's gonna be z equals k times xy. Directly multiply. Z varies jointly with x and y, okay, varies. I'm thinking equals k right away. Jointly, fancy word for directly, multiply, so k times xy. Inversely, under, so we're gonna divide by w. Looking at this last one, we have z varies, k okay, thinking equals right away, directly with x, okay, so k times multiply and inversely with the product of wy, inversely under, divide by wy. Now remember, these are just a few examples of combined variation, so let's try one. In number four, we have z varies directly with x and inversely with y, so let's come up with the general equation here. z varies, I'm thinking equals right away. k, right after my equals, directly, so multiply by x, inversely, divide by y. So the general equation is z equals k times x divided by y. Let's use this general equation to find the constant of variation k. We're given that x equals 2, y equals 8, and z equals 3. Well, let's plug in these values and find k. Well, it looks like when I solve for k, I get k is 12. So my constant of variation is 12, making my equation z equals 12x divided by y. Now I can use this particular equation to solve a follow-up question. Let's find z when x equals 4 and y equals 7. Go find it. And look at that. Z ends up being 48 sevenths. Why don't you go try the next two? Let's run through these really quick. Z varies jointly with X and Y. Jointly is directly multiply. So Z equals KXY. Find K when X is 2, Y is 3, and Z is 24. So 24 equals K times 2 times 3. Well, that's 6K equals 24. So K is going to equal 4. So now my particular equation is Z equals 4XY. And they ask a follow-up question for us to find Z when X is 4 and Y is 7. So Z equals 4 times 4 times 7. Ooh, all right. 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times 7, well, 16 times 7, 10 times 7 is 70, 6 times 7 is 42, 70 plus 42 is 112! I got it right! Number 6, Z varies inversely with the product of X and Y, so Z equals K, as soon as I see varies equals K, with inversely under, so divide by the product of X and Y. Find K. So k is 28, let's write our particular equation now, y equals 28 divided by xy, and solve for z when x is 4 and y is 7. z equals 1. 